Okay, welcome everyone for this uh, two days Iron Dome 7 training. So I'm going to do a screen share uh, to enable you to understand the training outline. Okay, so uh, you have just finished your prelim. So I will guide you to prove to make some uh, reflection uh, how to improve your results uh, from prelim to PSLE. So as you know, this September holiday uh, actually is quite critical. Uh, now is uh, you're having the one week break, right? Today is a seven. So this one week break, I hope that you also can spend some time to relax. Uh. Yeah, because after this one week, uh, it's all the way up here already. So I hope that uh, some of you, I understand that you still need to go to school for classes. Uh, but I have already advised your parents to spend about one or two days uh, with you so that you all can relax yourself and uh, enjoy this holiday before the, the peaking towards PSLE. Yeah. Okay. Okay, regarding the, the duration of this, I will explain later. So just, uh, just a, a short break here. After every 15 minutes, right, there is a sh short interval of 10 minutes. And then later the lunch break will be 55 minutes. Okay, the lunch break will be uh, around 11.20. Yeah, so during lunch, you all will shut down your computer, let your computer rest. After lunch, you have to re-log in with the same password. Okay, so this, uh, this from the next week onwards, uh, which is actually beginning of term four, is all the way up here. Okay, in between there's a listening comprehension exam on the 17th of uh, September. So I hope that every one of you can achieve full marks uh, for your listening comprehension. Because you know, right, this listening comprehension, as, you, as long as you pay attention, you understand what they say, right? It's possible to score full marks, okay? So that will, will help you to pull up your English and your mother tongue score. So after that, the next written paper is the English paper, which is on the 30th of September. So my advice to you and your parents, uh, the day before the English exam, right? don't overstress yourself. You have, need to relax well, because as you know, in composition writing, paper one, right, you need to have a relaxed, relaxed state of mind uh, to be able to understand the questions uh, carefully and be, to be able to write your uh, composition well. And then similarly for your paper two, so on the 29th, even some of my students, I advise them who are in my regular class, right? They can reschedule for the makeup on the 4th of October, which is one day before the science paper. Or if they choose to come, they can come. Uh, those are my regular class student. Okay, then the mathematics paper on 1st October. So, This is something I think many uh, children, uh, they find a bit stressful because most children, they are weaker in Chinese. So I told and also advise parents, right? The weekend before the Chinese paper, right? Exercise description. Uh, because you see for Chinese, right? It's very hard to improve uh, significantly within a short span of time. So some parents and children, they decided to use this weekend to concentrate on science, if your science is weak. Because science is the only subject with a short span of time with a correct understanding of concept, I can help you to pull up the marks. So in the past, I helped students jump three grades. Okay, how is that possible? Okay, later I show you some uh, information there. Okay, for exam, right, for science exam, this is the focus for section B. We got this training for this two days, we focus on section B, which is the paper two you need to give precise scientific answers and demonstrate application of concepts. So I believe most of you have gotten my book, right? Yeah. So you put your, the book uh, beside you and also the worksheets you have printed side by side. So there, I say, for example, this question refer to a certain page, you flip there, then you understand how to use this book. Okay. And then students should be able to apply the process skill uh, to apply scientific facts, concepts, and principles in new situations. Okay, in the paper that you have just printed, uh, you'll be able to see there are a few new situations. Uh, and then also these few days, today and uh, Friday, right? 
I will use actual prelim question to show you what are some of these new situations. And also for those who are more hardworking, you can visit my YouTube channel to look at some of the questions which I've uploaded to discuss on a certain question. Like this is a last year's paper, appear in PSLE paper, the last questions. Okay, this is a new situation. Okay, the new situation is because they say that this white solid is formed on the surface. Most of the time we are used to the fact that water droplet is formed, right? But water droplet is not a solid, uh, it's a liquid form. So this one, one step further, the water droplets has undergone further cooling. It freezes into ice chips or ice flakes. So this is one example of new situation. Okay, so this is the new situation. Uh. The water vapor lost heat to the surrounding, which is this paper wrapping, because they have said that they have taken this frozen sausage right out from the freezer and left in the open for a short period of time. After some time, these white solids are formed. Okay, I believe your teacher may have gone through this question with you. This is a very good question last year. Yeah. So the water droplet lost heat further to the frozen packaging, till frozen to become ice flakes. Okay, another uh, process skew, if you look at the process skew chart, right? Hypothesis formulation is the highest order. Okay, so in this question, also in the last year's paper, uh, question 32B on the malaria one, okay, we can see that uh, perhaps this child is confused by what is what the question is about. Because malaria is not a smell, it's a disease. But you see the answers being presented. It seems like the child is being confused with the answer. So during these two days, I will also be teaching you actually writing in point form format uh, is acceptable in PSLE section B because this is eventually a science exam, not an English exam. Okay, So as long as you can give concise, uh, okay, for those of you who are weaker in English, I encourage you to write short sentences rather than one long sentence, then you may be confused uh, what you want to express. And the examiner also will be confused uh, about what you're trying to express. So for science, be it whether you are the very uh, high scoring student or the low scoring student, right? Try to use short, concise sentences to express your thoughts because the examiner mark for concepts. They don't mark for your grammar or spelling mistake. But do take note if the keyword spell wrongly, right? Marks will be deducted. Lah. Okay? If the keyword spell wrongly, like photosynthesis is a process or condensation. They say state the processes involved. You spell condensation, spell wrongly. Okay, those are keywords. Huh? Okay, this one also the same thing, 32B, right? I put here HOT. Huh? HOT stands for higher order thinking skill. Okay, higher order thinking question. So you see, uh, sometimes if you don't understand or lack of practice, right? This child actually did a mock paper, he left blank. No? So this is, uh, uh, we need to, because science paper, we need to time ourselves. So it's a one hour, 45 minutes paper. And I encourage you to finish the MCQ, right? The 28 questions are within 45 minutes. So you have remaining one hour to deal with the remaining perhaps 13 to 14 open-ended questions. Okay. So you can see here, this is the model answer published by the publisher. It's quite a mouthful. So I'm helping students uh, to condense this mouthful sort of answer into short sentences, which we'll be learning here. So you can see these are the process skill that uh, you'll be tested for PSLE, starting from the easiest uh, observation. Okay, usually you see, uh, if you notice your prelim exam, right? usually the first open-ended questions uh, is related to P3 or P4, like comparing two organisms. One is an insect, one is not an insect. They ask you, observe and state the differences. And why is this animal or why is this organism an insect? Or why is this organism not classified as an insect? So you see the first one, observation and comparison. Okay, then classifying. Okay, usually for P5, P6 level, right? You are required to do this one, analysis. Uh, generating possibility. Okay, what's generating possibility? So those questions where you see uh, uh, suggest a change to the setup. If you see the word suggest, right? That is called this one, the generating possibility. Okay. Evaluating means like, what is the aim of the experiment? 
Okay, what is the aim of experiment? You can see some of these questions uh, which I have given you for the day one practice. Okay, lastly is the formulating hypothesis, which is the highest order one. Okay, for example, state the hypothesis of the experiment. Okay, next. Okay, this is the part uh, where I hope you can gain motivation. Uh. So for a student, right, let's say your prelim result right, is 74. 74 will land you at the upper end of AL5. Okay, can you see here? 74, right? And 11 marks uh, jump uh, from prelim to PSLE science is actually quite possible. So if you improve uh, to the Mr. Yu's training and your own revision, right, you increase by 11 marks. Uh, 74 plus 11 is 85. So 85 is the lower end of the AL2. So technically, you, you actually jump three AL grades, which is actually very possible for science. So I hope that you can make good use of this training uh, to improve your section B uh, scores. Okay, most of you, I believe your section A got no issue, right? And my philosophy is if you can understand section B well, right? Naturally, you will do very well in section A. Okay, because section A, you have choices. Man. You can choose what has the possibility. But section B is open-ended expression. Okay, so I wish you well in your training. And uh, these are the track record of some students. 11 students, they came for my training after one day course. All of them, they improved in the SA2. Because this group of students, they came to my one day training after the SA1. So all the best you are in this training. Okay, let's see this example here. Okay, if you turn to my book, right? Can you take out my book as well? Okay, with this book, right? Yeah. Okay, can you see this is actually written on the pitch inside? Ahmad open the freezer. Okay, I modified the question slightly. You turn to page 13. Page 13. Okay, I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know uh, these type of questions are very common. Confirm will come out in PSL, at least one question. Uh. So I use this example to teach you how to use the same concept uh, to apply to different scenario. Okay. Okay, those of you with my book, right, I need to change one word uh, because in the past, PSLE uh, examiner, they accept the word air. But over the last two years, right, they want students to answer more specifically. So can you change the key concept on page 13 right, to the water vapor? Okay, I already put in a blue color here. The water vapor with higher temperature okay, of the surrounding lost heat to the air with lower temperature from the freezer and condense to form tiny water droplets, which appear as white clouds. Okay, this is a concept. Uh. This concept meaning like condensation, when you see mist appearing, right, is always lost heat one. So you must identify the, the part uh, with a higher temperature. So when you open the freezer, right, definitely the air outside, right, has a higher temperature. But why we cannot use air? There's a reason. Okay, why we cannot use air? Okay, you remember in P5, right, you learn about air composition, right? Because air consists of nitrogen, 78%, oxygen, 21%, plus other gases and water vapor. Okay, if you use air, right, you're actually telling me that the oxygen uh, condense, like right, loose right, and become liquid oxygen, or the nitrogen uh, from the air, right? They lost it, become liquid nitrogen. But this is not the case. Okay? Sometimes you see on the road, there are this big tanker. Uh, they put there uh, hazardous or dangerous chemical, liquid nitrogen. Okay, liquid nitrogen, you need to form under very low temperature, like negative more than uh, maybe 100 and under high pressure. So this means that we open with the freezer and see, right? It's actually the warmer water vapor. The warmer water vapor from the surrounding lost heat uh, to the air that's exiting the freezer 
and condense to form tiny water droplets, which appear in white mist. Okay, this concept can also be used in another example. Like I think I believe most of you are wearing spectacle like me, right? So sometimes when you take a hot drink, you drink right, like, or you blow the blow uh blow your breath right into the hot cup of coffee or tea, right? Your your glass will fall, right? Correct. Okay, this one is the same scenario, same concept. So you can say that the warmer water vapor, right, from the hot tea or coffee, okay, lost heat uh, to the cooler surface of your spectacle and condense to form tiny water droplets, which appear as a white mist. Okay. Sometimes they ask you another question, like somebody ordered a bowl of hot soup in a restaurant. You can see this smoke coming out, right? Right? The smoke coming out, so same concept. Huh? The warmer water vapor above the soup, right? Lost heat to the cooler surrounding air and condensed to form tiny water droplets, which appear as white mist. So for, for this type of concept question, right? You take note of this word, huh? the water vapor. Okay, this one, huh? the water vapor. So in your book on page 13, right? You change the air to water vapor and then you highlight it. Okay, similarly, those with my book, right? Uh, you can, can you turn to one, uh, one more page there? On page 14. Okay, on page 14, you can see there, right? In the box there. So can you change the, the end also to water vapor? The water vapor. Yeah, I know some students receive my book. I have a uh, manually change for them. I put WV. WV means water vapor. Okay. The water vapor with higher temperature in the surrounding lost heat to the lower surface temperature of the back of ice. So you see in my book here on page 14, right? It's the same concept to this one. Because this one, you can see on page 14, the person put a bag of ice right, and put on the electronic balance. Can you see? So after some time, uh, there's an increase in, in the weight of the bag of ice from 122.7 to 123.4. So where does this extra weight come from? So this extra weight is actually, it came from the warmer water vapor, right? From the surrounding, right? Lost heat to the cooler external surface of the bag of ice and condensed to form tiny water droplets. So the extra water droplets are added to the extra weight. That's why you get one, two, three point four. Okay, it's less than one gram, uh, zero point something gram. Because in the air, there's this water vapor. Okay, can I uh, understand? So you take note of this, uh, confirm will come out in PSLE. This is our question. It's called the uh, water cycle condensation questions. So this concept, right? will serve you very well uh, in many situations. It's so-called in many new situations. So I repeat, uh, like this one, open the freezer, the white smoke come out. And then when you drink hot coffee or hot tea, your, your glass will fall. Okay. Another example is when you exit uh, from an air-conditioned car to the external environment, your, your spectacles will fall, right? Sometimes you alight from the bus, right? The aircon bus for quite some time, your spectacles will fall. So it's the same concept. Okay, next. Uh. So once again, if you want to review, right, you can go into my YouTube channel. I have given many examples of such questions to help students to memorize and appreciate. Okay, this question actually came out in this year's prelim uh, paper. I find this question is very good. <laughs> okay, we also doing, I'm also helping you doing an error analysis. Uh. Error analysis means that now we examine this student answer, try to understand how come she was marked wrong or how come the marks was not being awarded. Yeah. So Lushen, air also got other stuff I told you because air is a mixture. So it has a predominantly nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor and other rare gases. Okay. So you look at this question. Uh, the student actually applied this the concept which I've taught her. But here, the, the teacher required one more, one more thing that she, she has missed out. Because you look at her answer, right? The warm water vapor came into contact with the cooler surface of the ice cream. 
And then this part was underlined red and a cross was prominent. So because of this thing, she lost two marks. She's not even given half marks or one mark, which I pity her because this school actually, they exercise very strict marking. So actually the thing she left out is, because you see in between the, uh, just above the ice cream, right? The air is actually cooled by the ice cream. So the, the model answer, which I've typed here, you can see, right? Is actually the warmer water vapor with higher temperature from the surrounding lost heat to the air with lower temperature around the ice cream. Okay, because this part, right? This part, uh, the air has been cooled by the ice cream. So this part she left, she missed out this part. So this is an important thing. Eh? So you must understand that when this thing happened, okay, the warmer water vapor actually lost heat to the cooler air just above the ice cream and condensed to form tiny water droplets, which appear as mist. Okay, now I want to ask you uh, to think, uh, think further, right? If, uh, if her answer is this one, the warmer water vapor, right? came into contact with the cooler surface of the ice cream, correct? Lost heat. Huh? So what would be formed? Huh? Okay, this one, I think you need to do some uh, investigation. Actually, those of you who can eat ice cream and like to eat ice cream, huh, you can actually do this. And it works very well on those, uh, you know, like ice cream popsicle or those flat one, not, not, the, not this uh, like scoop one. Okay, if you notice if you unwrap an ice cream, right, you hold it in the air, right? You observe uh, for a short while that tiny ice flakes right, may start to form on the ice cream. Okay, if you mention that, uh, actually is the warmer water vapor came into contact with the cooler surface of ice cream and will form tiny uh, ice specks uh, on the surface of the ice cream. So you, you can do this observation. So later, maybe after lunch or in the afternoon, right, you buy one ice cream, right? you, you don't eat first open, then you put in the air, right? You observe, you see whether there are these tiny air, so-called like uh, ice specks uh, forming on ice cream. Okay, when this form, right, it is this, actually this explanation. The warmer water vapor from the surrounding lost heat to the surface of ice cream, okay, and condensed to form tiny ice specks, okay, like, like, like dust-like dust -like particle of ice on ice cream. Okay, but here is the mist. So the mist is actually in a gaseous state. So the proper answer should be the water vapor from the surrounding, right? Lost heat to the lower temperature of the, of the air above the ice cream and condensed to form tiny water droplets. Okay, you take note that uh, I also make a special note here. Uh, most students or teachers, they are okay with writing warmer air, right? But in order to be more specific, you should use the word temperature. So you notice I put the water vapor with higher temperature. Okay. But it's okay if you write the warmer water vapor. It's okay. It's acceptable. But I prefer to teach students to use more precise scientific word. Because what is warm to you may not be warm to me. It's very subjective. But if you use the word temperature, right, it's very specific. Okay. Maybe it's at 40 degrees Celsius. The water vapor at 40 degrees Celsius lost heat to the air around the ice cream at 20 degrees Celsius. Very specific. Okay, so now I do a slight animation here. This is I call annotation uh, to help students uh, appreciate the concept. So what I drew here is uh, like a green tea ice cream scoop, right? So after a while, the air around the green tea ice cream scoop, right, will lost heat. So the, I put here, this represents the cool the air that has been cooled. And then the warmer water vapor from the surrounding comes into contact with this layer of air that has been cooled by the ice cream and condensed to form tiny water droplets which appear as mist. Which appear as mist. So once again, uh, I've recorded this on the YouTube channel. You can revisit uh, to reinforce your learning. Okay, this similar question, 
Uh, this also appears in the uh, in this prelim paper. The, the reason I show you is uh, this is the five mark questions. So the student has uh, followed my instruction and she was, she was able to get all correct five marks. Five mark question, okay. So you can also do it. Huh? So this book, you make good use of it because I put a, put a time here. You can actually master in two hours, but you don't squeeze everything in two hours. Huh? You try to spread out two hours per day, use this book during this holiday to master the concepts. And behind their answers key given to check your understanding. So this uh, two days intensive course here, right? I will direct you to these concepts and then help you to answer some of the questions uh, in the paper here. Okay. So this is the Iron Dome training. So I hope that you make good use of the book and answer the questions well. And it's possible to jump grades from AL5 to AL2. Okay, now uh, I will discuss one question from a paper that you have received, right? Okay, I'll open a file. And then I do a screen share. 